Let's start with worship. Um, certainly the scriptures would say that the essential duty or function of a human person is worship. Um, but I think we have to understand what it means mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, flesh that out. I mean, that sounds like the essential duty of a human being is to go to church, and that's not at all what it means. <laughs> or to be pious. It definitely doesn't mean that, because mm -hmm. piety is usually a running away from God by manipulating mm -hmm. religion, I mean, feeling good about it. First of all, uh, maybe we would have to say that worship is not religion, as we've been talking about it, or the, 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 the natural direction of religion, of, of defining and controlling things. Mm -hmm. Worship is awe. So if you don't stand in awe of someone or something, how could you worship? I mean, I, I would know that's not possible. So it's starting to see connections that will give us awe and that will, will allow us to worship. So obviously we have some experience of that in terms of moments in nature where we could, we could find a natural awe because something is beautiful, stunning, it takes us by surprise or out of the ordinary. We ought to have experience of that with people from time to time where we, whether we know them well or not, uh, we're struck with something that takes us by surprise, takes our breath away. Mm -hmm. uh, and we respond with awe. And certainly we should have some experience of that with God, because from time to time God allows us to taste something of the divine, and we're taken aback. Uh, also in looking at ourselves, from time to time mm -hmm. we see something in ourselves which is a connection or a possibility or a hope, or a beauty that we would not normally be aware of. So, awe is the essence of worship, and we have to do everything possible. I mean, that's an obligation to any human person uh, to, to uh, promote awe. But we have to practice it. I mean, so it's no problem that we fail at worship. Uh, frequently, even in our congregations where we're trying to teach each other worship or you know, present an atmosphere of worship, it's no problem that we fail. Uh, the problem would be that we would stop trying. The issue is I'm supposed to stand before God, not tight and moralistically, like I'm getting all the answers right and I'm doing the right things, but relaxed, seeing things as God sees them, and laughing. I mean, laughter would mm -hmm. be, for example, maybe the fundamental issue of worship. Mm -hmm. That I could say, I could laugh in joy, sing in praise, because I see it as God sees it. And God would say at certain points, that includes looking at sin, um, hatred, mm -hmm. or anything that you want to say that's negative, and laughing in joy because it's in God. How it's in God, I don't have to figure out, but it's in God, and that would be part of worship. And what Christianity has done is right belief, so truth, mm -hmm. and right life, morality, mm -hmm. and we've so overemphasized them that, of course, the passion is gone, mm -hmm. that practically anything that Jesus has said is gone, we just, you know, develop a system which becomes monolithic and horrific and, you know, a monster and very inhumane. And, of course, we have plenty of examples of that current and past.